Edo. So, as you've read in the title, how some of the suggestions of what I would say about how to change the way rugby league is at the moment or how to make it better or at least make it a little bit more um, feasible for some people, especially to increase crowds and other things. You know, since the new guys, so the IMG um, guys have come up with their own ideas, so some of those is like to reintroduce the categories and stuff like that, so like category A, B and C. So A obviously being like your top teams in the Super League, B being some of those ones who are a little bit in between, and then C being basically you're more than, more than likely the bottom end of the tier. I'm not going to go into too many kind of things what they've said because a lot of it is some of it is like bringing back the um, like some of like the franchise ideas and stuff like that so like doing the licensing and things like that and like getting rid of promotion and relegation which feeds into something that I'm going to mention a little bit later um, plus you know the not looking at doing other things kind of like you know they're looking at you know like repositioning the calendar to optimize the flow and narrative of engagement incorporating regular peaks of interest for the you know like the compelling season climax operations to capitalize and maximize the efficiencies and drive incremental revenue whatever the hell that means probably it's basically oh let's stick another five pound on the cheapest tickets and let's make it so that it becomes unaffordable which is basically what it's becoming in sometimes you know uh, so yeah new brand strategies Okay, new brand strategies, right, okay, so does that mean that you're looking at moving away from Sky? Or is it going to be kind of like, you know, Welcome to Super League! Boom! Massive explosion! Ah. You know, are they going to kind of like, you know, do that or other things? I don't freaking know, but, meh. You know, there's all sorts of other bits and pieces in there, with, you know, like, ideas of canning off the magic weekend um other things there's all sorts of bits you can find you can find that on the on the bbc sport website even to the super league stuff as well now moving into what how i would do it now then one of the first things is since sky got away with weaseling out of paying a decent amount and they've they've basically created their own mini price for themselves if Sky are not willing to put their hands in the pocket and pay up bin them off bin them off because Sky are one of the bigger problems here because that filters down to something else there is all sorts of other things all of the stuff from Channel 4 the viewing figures on Channel 4 and the reception that Channel 4 have had has been overwhelmingly amazing I've seen some of the games on Channel 4 the ones that I couldn't go to watch. And they've been pretty good, you know. So like the guys that they've got who are there, all the talking heads and everything, they are knowledgeable. Those who aren't that knowledgeable are learning from other people. They're getting ex-players in. They're getting the other talking heads in. Sometimes even if it means that they've got to try and drag on a head in a jar, you know. They've got people who know and understand and have a passion for the sport, not just someone who's there just picking up a frigging paycheck. So, number one, if Sky are not going to be there, get them the fuck out of here. I know BT were looking at it a while ago, just through some things that I read. There's a lot of stuff in the past. Look, BBC might not really want it, but I know Channel 4 are doing all right with it. Stuff to do with the World Cup that's coming up now, BBC and ITV are sharing some of the hosts, the hosting rights. So ITV could get away with it. Channel 5 could possibly do it. There is other networks around that could do it as well. Even if it meant, oh, well, why don't we do, you know, you've got your own social media teams. So why don't you live stream some and have your own ticketed, like, you know, your own pay-per-view service, which could be quite friggin' cheap. And then you can stream it yourself over the host of that period. Simple. Another one. Now, this is something that I've always said would be better. A 14-team Super League with a 2-up, two 2-down, two 
promotion and relegation system. Meaning there's going to be a lot more turnover and a lot more coming in and out. So teams that could possibly do all right up here in the Super League structure, they would have a chance at getting up. And I'm not even saying, hey, well, let's protect a league. Let's protect, you know, let, let's protect this team. Let's protect that team. I ain't saying protect any teams at all. Every team will have a problem and they could go down. It always happens. Look at what's going on with Wire. They've plummeted and they were skirting the edges of it. So having 14 teams, also that would mean then that the third time of playing another team, so basically your extra fixtures will be taken up with that. Now, included in this, there is the side note of maybe every team has a bye week. Just so included in this time period, there is a point where they could have a, an, a regulatory bye week. So that could come in like, you know, let's say week 10. Because with 14 teams, so you'd be playing 13 teams at home and 13 away, obviously. So it's 26. So you could easily spread that out to a 27 week. So, so to say from week 10, two teams have their bye week. So they have, a, you know, a designated rest week and then from that point onwards all the way up all the other teams in twos have their bye week they have their rest week thus meaning any borderline injuries that could have been on the niggle could now go by the bye but it also means that there is a chance to rest another one which is something that I've noticed. No. Tickets. Go and watch in Wigan sometimes. Sometimes it's 25, but it's very rare I'm ever finding a 25 quid ticket. It's now becoming 30 quid to do that. Then plus factor in the fact that sometimes it's a night game. Yeah. So, if you guys want to grow the sport, how about this? A 20 quid adult ticket cap done that would mean then you get more people in because the more people are got aren't having to wonder mm, yeah because of that because then if you factor in the fact that oh you've got to get your food you've got to get your drink so you're already a tenner down on where you were before so the food will come across so they might actually buy more stuff yeah then for the kid 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 ideas have more mandated cheap family days those ones would include a designated family style ticket or if you are just a single parent so like one person that goes and takes the kids those kids could get in for a quid while you get in for 20 quid or you could get in for 15 quid on a designated cheap day and the kids get in for a quid I know it might seem stupid but it can work you know Another thing, going back to the sky. Get rid of these fucking 8 o'clock kickoffs at night. There's some games where if they were put on on a Saturday or a Sunday, or even a bank holiday, because they have happened on the Thursday or Friday night before a bank holiday, you could have had 16, 17, 18,000 people in that stadium. But instead you got 11,000. Because it's a night game. Because Sky bosses you boys around. You're supposed to be the ones telling them where to go. Not them telling you where to go. So there's no bottle there either. Because those night games are a crowd killer. Especially at certain times of the year. In the middle of the summer it's not that bad. But at the starts of the season. And when it starts to get shitty like it is right now with the weather. It's not good. It really doesn't help. Because you're just killing the crowd. You're killing the audience. You know? So feeding from that on a on a Sunday. How about you have a designated raft of games which are 
1 o'clock, 1.30 or 2 o'clock, maybe even a 2.30 kickoff. So you have them staggered. Or you have them back to backs on whatever TV platform you're doing. So you could have, for instance, Leeds at home. And then the next one could be Wolves at home. Boom. Back to back. Straight from one, straight to the other. So you can have a one o'clock kickoff and then have the three o'clock kickoff being the woof. Done. No issues there, is there? Also, the other thing as well is those teams that share a stadium. You know, because you could also have some Saturday games. Those teams that share a stadium could then use that facility on the Saturday if the football team is away. There's another bit there, you know. Also, going back to the social media stuff to do with like Twitch and live streaming your own shit. Better promotion of the game because you're doing a shite job of it. Because I can't bloody see it. Only thing I can see at the moment is stuff at World Cup. And even then, it's a little bit half arsed it's the same art style that you've had for the past 15 frigging years. Come on, guys. Where's it all over the radio? Where's it in the paper? Where's the net ads? Where's it on Twitter? It's not there. Where's it on YouTube? It's not there. You're not taking the opportunities for your own self-promotion. You're just going, oh, let's just stick it on BBC. No, oh, let's just have a quick word with ITV. Let's do that. Oh, yeah, just put a little card up on Sky just to remind people. Oh yeah, let's just do a little thing for this and a little thing for that. Little bits aren't working. You need to slam it, slam it, slam it. Otherwise, you're going to kill it all. And the main problem is, you allowed Sky to half what they were paying. So it shows you've got no scrot. You've got no bottle to actually go to the table and argue the point. Because you could have easily had a really good deal on the table from another company. And you went, nah mate, nah mate. I'll just go do this. Because you're too fucking soft. And because you just sit there going, but I don't want them upset the start as qual. Sometimes you've got to kick the frigging table from under them and go, look, either pay up or fuck off. And that's how you've got to do it from now on. Because you're killing it all. Top teams are choking with no money. You're not even going to help your international friends with this. The way that you hamstrung it up with Toronto, making them pay for all their stuff and locking them out of a TV rights deal. They could have had the richest market and you didn't can want it. You practically told them to go f themselves. Then look what happened. Yeah, all right, COVID hit and all that, but you made the problem worse with your own selfishness and your own, oh, well, I can't be bothered with it. You're lucky Catalans are doing all right because that would have also been a massive fail on your behalf because you've locked them out of another TV deal. You've told them they have to make their own deals. They have to make sure that they can do stuff. How is that going to help growing the French game? Because they're the only ones there because most of the French teams cannot cope with them yet. The French system is good, yes, but you are the problem and you are the ones that are making the French system not as good as it should be. You know, other things at like the grand final doesn't just have to be at Old Trafford all the goddamn time. You could take it to the Etihad. That's got a big enough thing. If Anfield manages to ma fit the dimensions for the field, you could take it there. You could take it to you know, Everton's new ground when that's finished. doesn't always have to go to Old Trafford. Old Trafford is a problem in itself because it's still got a leaky roof. It's still got bad dimensions because the in-goal area is so tight. There is going to be injuries coming from a try in there. There's also a lot of other bloody problems with that place. Like rats in the concessions. Toilets that don't flush half the time. Hot water that just comes and goes. So Old Trafford might be off the cards soon if the owners or potential new owners of Man United wants to redevelop the site. Which is a big thing because that is one of the biggest stadiums and it is looking a little bit sad for itself. So that could become off the, off the cards. So if you want to have a big final...
by all means, take it to a big stadium. But how many other big stadiums do we have in this in the entirety of the UK? Because you've got the Millennium Stadium, you know, Principality Stadium, whatever. So you could always go there and close the lid and have an absolute mass noise, or even with the open, and do that. You could take it down to Wems, which, you know, some people will say yay, some people will say nay, you know. Take it to Tottenham, because that one looked like it was all right. You could take it to Arsenal. There's loads of places you could go. You could, I know some people are probably saying, oh, no, but what about, well, you know, take it to Twickenham. Yeah, again, there's going to be problems because, oh, you know, no, it's Union. It's rugby. The place is set up for rugby. You could take it there. You could take it up to Murrayfield. You could take it into Scotland for some of their stuff. You could take it over to Ireland if needs be and have an absolute showcase event. Have pre-game, you know, have turn it into a mini Super Bowl. Basically, you know, there's all sorts of little ideas where you could chuck this in, chuck that in. You could literally have a women's final on the same day prior to it. You know, could do that. There's lots of other things that can be done rather than just looking back at the past and what worked and what didn't. Because sometimes you need to look to the future and come up with new ideas or go, this did work, but this had a failure. So what if we modify that and chuck it here and do this and do that? You know, roll it around a little bit. It might work, you never know. But stick your ideas down below for whatever you think, where I got it wrong, what you would improve, how you would come up with it, and whether it is a good thing or a bad thing. Anyway, I've, I've yelled on enough. Um, you know, it's over 17 minutes now, so... I will leave you with that. Peace.